complete control. No shirt, no shoes, no dives. <laughs> I have to ask you, you know, when you started the band, did you ever anticipate 20 years of doing Bad Religion? No. I, you know, I, I think when we were in Graffin's Garage starting the band, it was kind of like, let's just get together tomorrow and see what's up. And then as we got a collection of songs together, I remember one time uh, a couple of the friends from the Valley came over and, and we were just playing them for them. They were sitting there and we played maybe six or seven songs and said, should we just go and record these? We were asking people and they're like, yeah, like... How long was that? Was that like 15 minutes or whatever? We didn't have any idea. And so we thought, oh, we got enough songs to go make a demo tape. And we made that tape. We gave that tape to Hetson. Hetson took it into Rodney on the Rock. They played it on Rodney on the Rock. And, and people were telling us the next day, oh, we heard your tape. It was pretty good. So it kind of just snowballed. We never thought of anything. It, it never really made any, you know, we were never like, we're going to be the biggest band in the world. Was it just as an outlet for you guys to get it, together? It, it was really a place to. It was a, it was an outlet and kind of a place to hide because I seriously in 1980 being a punk rock in Woodland Hills was not cool. There was a lot of like describe that a little more detail for our listeners. Uh, well, you're going to get beat up by a guy in a Camaro with a Rush 2112 sticker <laughs> on the back of it. <laughs> All right, there, that's a pretty good description. There, there was right a there. lot of running away back then so you ran into the garage pretty much just after school just go straight to graffin's garage and we all had our crappy gear and we're just gonna write songs and play songs and not go outside yeah <laughs> the, the, thing, the thing with bad religion you know 28 years you have so much so many different styles of music that have you know that have come and some have gone, you know, you had, and you had also so many different types of music that became really popular in the eighties, you know, you had the metal scene in the nineties, yeah. you had grunge, you know, now you have the emo scream core sound, but bad religion has always stayed the same. Whenever you got a bad religion record, whenever you went to a bad religion show, you knew what you were getting. How have you guys done that? I, I, you know why? Because I think we just were too naive to know what's popular. If that makes sense. Like, I, I think that we listen, like, I, I think Brett and I would probably be, more in tune with and now brooks would be in tune with what's popular now but it, it never really it never drifted into what we were doing with bad religion even when we did cover songs if we would go hey we're going to do this david bowie cover song within five minutes we'd just be beating it up and it would sound like us and i i think that's just what we do if that makes sense so no matter what kind of song came in graph it's like oh i wrote this really lovely piano ballad and we just go bring it in and we'll just <laughs> thrash it yeah, and just beat the crap out of it, and then it becomes bad religion. So, I think what happened was after a while we just sort of uh, stopped thinking about what was happening outside, what was popular. I mean, uh, with, with running Epitaph, we knew that uh, if you were going to sign bands that were uh, sounding like whatever was popular now, by the time you got the record out, that wasn't going to be popular anymore. We knew all that because you know. Having the Battle Religion Epitaph hat, you, you see the business end of it and go, man, this is crap. I don't it's like when, when people go like, oh, God, I just, I would love to come backstage at a concert. And you really want to say to them, there's two filthy flea-ridden couches back there and a pile of vomit in the corner. That's what's back there. You don't, you know, you think because of the curtain... That it's like gold and chocolate and honey and naked girls running everywhere. <laughs> but, you know, it's the Wizard of Oz. You pay no attention to what's behind there because the reality of all of this isn't what it appears to be. You know that. So, you know, doing this is sort of uh, uh, it's, it's the best job you could ever have. It's completely insane. And no normal person would ever really go like, yeah, this is rad. <laughs> Do you think that's what makes you get through it, though, that, that you've been doing it and that, that this is the only thing that you know? So almost if you were to stop and touch on the normal nine to five, mm -hmm. not the traveling, w w do you feel that you'd miss it right the one away? Yeah, the one time I stopped, which was 84, and I sold all my gear. I said, I'm never playing music again. I'm out of this. I'm done with this. And I went and got a job. I worked for like three and a half years in a machine shop. And every day I just kind of kept going, man, I, I really miss this. Uh, I, it's it's sort of an insane drive. I guess it's a it's a it's an addiction, right? Um, I think that that 
part of what keeps it going for this band. I've played in a multitude of other bands, and in Bad Religion, there's something magic that happens when when we're playing. I don't know what it is. I can't really describe it. But I've played with other bands, and it's not there. But with this band, it's there. Like when we are when we're just sitting in a rehearsal hall, not much bigger than this room right here playing and it's like this is so hot this is just you're just grinding it out and you just the hair on the back of your neck is standing up that's what it's all about you know and then you start putting in the the actual uh possibility that you can go and play in front of other people and how humbling that is and you know what a uh what an honor it is to be asked to go to orlando or germany or japan and and go and play in front of people you just sit back and go this is just an incredible it's an incredible ride. With the grains of wrath, blazing a path from sea 